The opposite of security is the vulnerability of abandonment. A core wound of abandonment lies in many of us. And this wound cuts as deep as the Grand Canyon. As humans, we have a basic need for security. We come into this world 100% vulnerable. When we don't feel safe and we feel threatened, we develop a whole bunch of core coping tools to help us manage. These tools might send us into the fight, flight, freeze, fawn mode of survival. We either grow up feeling secure or insecure. And if we are insecure, we feel the threat of abandonment at the core of our being. Getting passed over for a promotion, getting rejected for an application, or maybe something as simple as somebody not responding to you directly when you ask a question. These things can bring up the hurt feelings of abandonment. Shame is also a part of this abandonment process. We might feel a need to feel a sense of shame in order to feel like we are being our true selves and acting out our destiny. This could be a critical voice in our head, creating a self-fulfilling prophecy. Important point that I'd like to make is that all hurt leads to abandonment. And if you're trying to chase this hurt in a different direction, you might not get to the actual core wound and start the healing process. Many years ago, I was riding my bicycle through this area with a friend, and we were joking that if anything happened to us, flat tire, mechanical problems, that this would lead us to something that we called the stranded abandoned feeling. And about a mile after having this joke, I looked in my rear view mirror and she was nowhere to be seen. She had got a flat tire. And yes, we experience the stranded abandoned feeling. How many times in life though do things happen and we get upset and find ourselves in that same trap and not knowing how to get out of it? Luckily with the bicycle, I had patch kit and pump and all the tools that I needed to get us back on our way. But in life, we don't always have the tools. We know what it's like to be abandoned. We know what it's like to feel stranded. And on top of those two things, we also know what it's like to feel shame. But we don't necessarily have the coping tools to get out of those emotions. And the coping tools that we've reached for, whether it be substance abuse, alcohol, weed, marijuana, or codependency, gambling, shopping, all these things, these don't really help heal that core wound of abandonment. This is when my patients relapse to substances, I ask them, what was the trigger? What was going on with you when you relapsed? And they often say, you know, nothing, everything was great. I relapsed because I relapsed they don't recognize that somewhere deep inside of them, there was a trigger of abandonment. Maybe they relapsed because they had opportunity. And opportunity is an absence of being around other people, which can lead to a sense of isolation. Maybe it was rejection. Maybe somebody crossed a boundary with them or set a boundary with them. And that boundary, although healthy, just didn't sit right with them. And that boundary triggered a sense of abandonment, a sense of rejection. If you're setting that boundary with me, then maybe you don't like me. Maybe you don't want to be around me. Maybe I don't need to be around you. By clicking into that pain, it's very easy for the dominoes to start to fall of poor coping skills after poor coping skills and then leading back to relapse. This is why I say it is so important to understand our shame cycles and our core wound of abandonment because it's deep. It's at the very core of the onion with all the other layers of beliefs on top of that. And sometimes when we get focused on those layers of belief, things like getting passed over for a job, things like not getting picked for a sports team, things like not getting the grade you wanted, things like getting a speeding ticket when other people around you didn't get pulled over. All of these things have reason to make you upset. But if you're dealing with a core wound of abandonment, 
that's just magnified and blown out of the water. Now that we've talked about abandonment, rejection, and shame, what do we do about it? That's a great question. We can read a lot of self-help books because there's a lot of literature about that. We can watch a lot of YouTube videos. We can go to seminars. We can work the steps, whether we're in a program of Alcoholics Anonymous, Narcotics Anonymous, ACA, codependency. We can go into therapy. We can even do trauma reprocessing like EMDR therapy. But the simple answer, first of all, do what works for you. But in finding what works for you, notice when these feelings come up for you. Mindfulness is the practice of being in the moment. And here at the Grand Canyon, I am totally trying to be in the moment here. If you're feeling a sense of abandonment, how does that feel in your body? Where does it materialize? Where do you carry that feeling? Radical acceptance is a beginning state to understand that maybe you aren't feeling safe. And to ask yourself, do a little reality testing, what's happening to make you not feel safe at this time? Is it rejection? Is it shame? Is it self-inflicted? Sometimes we do not enjoy things when they're going well because we don't think that we deserve them. So we have to abandon ourselves in the process because that's something that we've done for so long. Find a way to ground yourself and just feel these feelings. And then maybe reach out, talk to somebody about it. This video by any means is not a way to give you guys a cure of how to deal with the abandonment trigger, but to just emphasize its importance. Triggers can happen anytime. And in today's crazy world, it's almost unrealistic when they don't come up. I'm Ken Francis, coming to you from the Grand Canyon in Arizona, reminding you to move out of rejection and abandonment. Stop living in shame and create a new sense of safety and security for yourself. Thanks for being a part of this moment and thank you for watching. And don't stand too close to the edge. And speaking of stranded, abandoned feeling, I actually had a dead car battery this morning, but coping tools, thank you, AAA.